So when the body moves from A to A to C, the angular displacement theta 2, then A to D, we have a larger angular displacement at the center, theta 4, uh, 3. So we realize that as time changes, as time, as time changes, the angle, the angle, change the angle at the center, or the angular displacement at the center also changes. Changes. So if you have a changing angular displacement, when angular displacement at the center is changing, so the theta over the t, okay, the rate of change of angular displacement at the center with time, it gives us a new quantity, which we call as angular velocity. Angular velocity represented as omega. So we are saying that omega is equal to the rate of change of angular displacement, angular displacement with time, okay? Omega is equal to the theta over the t. The moment you hear angular, angular, all angular measurements occurs at the center. Please, are we okay? Are we okay? Mr. Jopis, can you So the angle, okay, due to the changing position of the object with time, of course, it will take different, if the body moves from A to B, it will take different time to move from A to C, then from A to D, on and on and on. So um, all positions within the circumference occur with changing time. And that would correspond to a changing angle described at the center. So when you have a changing angle at the center, which we call as angular displacement with time, it gives or uh, it results in what we call as angular velocity, represented by the letter omega. So we define angular velocity, angular velocity, omega, is defined as the rate of change of angular displacement with respect to time. The rate, the rate of change of angular displacement. With respect to time, is known as angular velocity, or what we also call as angular speed. Please, are we okay? Yes. What do you think will be the SI unit of angular velocity or angular speed? Yes, what will be the SI unit of angular, angular velocity or angular speed? Radian uh, per second. Radian per, per second. Thank you. So because I want to change my marker. These markers will always disappoint me. Because omega, angular velocity or angular speed omega is given by theta over t. The SI unit of angular um, displacement is radian divided by 
SI unit of time is second. And so SI unit of angular velocity or angular speed is equal to radian per second. Other units, other units can be because omega is theta on t. If the unit of angular displacement is not expressed in SI, such as rate uh, revolution, if the time is not expressed, Deborah, your hand is up. Mr. Edia. Hello. Please. Um, I didn't join any, but why is the SI unit for angular displacement radii? Why is it what? Rad. Why the, um, the SI unit for angular displacement rad? Uh, here, you must know. You don't have to understand. <laughs> And so I, I don't want to go through the mathematics of it, but um, the SI unit of angular displacement, which is the angle described at the center, is radian. There is, there is a reason why, but we are applying it, okay? All right. Yes. Okay, so, Ada, hello. Respect to time, we didn't come in the definition of angular. Oh, I want I just yes. want you to I just want you to complete it. Okay. The rate of change of angular displacement with respect to time. Okay. Uh, so complete it for me. It's known as angular velocity. Okay. Okay. So okay. other units can be revolution per minute. It can be per hour and so on and so forth. It can also be, the other unit can be degree per second, degree per minute, degree per hour, okay? But if you are expressing it in SI, it should be radian per second. Please, are we okay? So, Mr. Jr., the rev, um over minutes can you, can it also be rev over seconds rev over hours yes, like it degree? can be yes it can be one quantity can be expressed in si and the other left for you to um um express is that okay for the radian you can't do that pardon can you also do the same thing for the radian or the yes. radian because the si and unit is... i can give you um the angular speed of radian per minute and I expect you to convert to SI units. Okay. Let me pick a question. Let me pick a question. Hello. Please can you capture it? I can't really see the board. I'm coming. Let me give you a question. Okay, we'll we'll come to it. So you let's let's go through that three and then we we solve the question with it right i'm coming let me take a shot of it and then to the platform Irene, mean, it's it's to the party. Please, thank you. All right, so that is it. So this is similar to see in linear motion, when your when um displacement changes with respect to time, it gives us velocity. Okay, and so in circular motion, when angular displacement changes with time, it gives us angular velocity. So when you hear angular, angular, then we are talking about either circular or rotational motion, right? Then another 
observation. You see, when you own your fan, the ceiling fan, you realize that as, as the fan begins, its momentum builds up. So the fan will be rotating, okay, small in the beginning. Then as time goes on, its rotation will be so fast, okay? So you have, as it begins to rotate, its angular displacement will be changing with respect to time. Then this will be so fast when there is, when the angular displacement is changing, okay, within that much time, then the angular speed at the center will also be increasing. Then we can have a situation where the angular speed at the center would also be changing with respect to time. Just as in linear motion, when the speed, when velocity, the rate of change of velocity, dv, changes with dt, what does it amount to? When velocity changes with respect to time, it gives acceleration. So in circular motion as well, when angular velocity at the center also changes, as in increases with respect to time, it also amounts to what we call as angular acceleration, represented as um, either A or alpha. Okay, so we define the rate of change, the rate of change of angular velocity. Angular velocity, please, or, or speed, angular velocity or speed, slash speed, with respect to time, is known as angular acceleration. alpha. So linear motions and then circular motion have that thing in common. We have linear displacement. <laughs> Hello. Please, I can't see what's on the board. Oh, then I think it's a, it's a natural problem. Because it is not at where we have reflection, the reflection of light. So linear, can you rejoin linear motion and angular motion? In linear motion, we have what we call displacement, S. And the angular, um, circular motion, and the circular motion, we have what we call angular, displacement represented by the letter theta. Now in linear motion, when displacement, linear displacement changes with time, this amounts to velocity. In circular motion, when there's a change in angular displacement with respect to time, we have angular speed or angular velocity omega. Then when the, the linear velocity also changes with respect to time, this amounts to acceleration in linear motion. And the circular motion, when there is a rate of change of angular velocity or speed with respect to time, it amounts to angular acceleration. Please, are we okay? Yes, please. And we can do that for units. We can do that for units as well. We can do that for units. Linear as against circular. The SI unit for 
linear displacement meter. The SI unit for angular displacement radian, shortened as rad. The SI unit for linear velocity meter per second. SI units of angular velocity radian per second. SI unit for acceleration meter per second squared. SI unit for angular acceleration radian per second squared. So that's the relationship between linear motion and then circular motion. Please, are we fine? Are we okay? Yes, please. All right. Are you done writing? I want to adjust the screen to this side. Okay, then hurry up for me. Then let's also look at the relationship between we've defined we've looked at the relationship between linear displacement and angular displacement. Let's look at what you said the there are I can't see the one on the top. Can we continue? Mr. Adria, please, the last one, what have you written? Can you see? Meter per second squared yes. and radian per yes. second squared. So, can I adjust the screen? Yes, yes. Okay, so we also saw that the relationship between linear displacement and angular displacement is this. Let us identify the relationship between linear velocity, okay, and then angular velocity. As I as I said earlier when the displacement is changing with respect to time, we have linear velocity within the circumference. When the angular displacement is changing with respect to time, we have angular velocity at the center. So as the displacement is changing with time, then the angular velocity also changes with time, okay? So let's identify the relationship between linear velocity within the circumference and then angular velocity at the center, okay? Let's, when we divide both sides of the equation, okay, by time. So left-hand side divided by T, right-hand side divided by T. Kezi, are you there? Yes, please. So when, when you are dividing both sides of the equation by time, what is this? What is the uh, expression at the left hand side? Yes, what is this? S on T, what is it? Velocity. So this is linear velocity V. You realize that the right hand side, we have R times theta on T. What is theta on T? What is theta on T? Angular velocity. So this is, we have V is equal to R times omega. And this is the relationship between a changing linear velocity, a changing linear displacement within the circumference, and then a changing, um, a changing linear, um, um, sorry, a changing angular velocity at the, at the center. So when linear displacement changes with time, it gives us linear velocity. When angular velo uh, velocity changes, sorry, angular displacement changes with time, it gives us angular velocity. And so this is the relationship between linear velocity where 
where V equals linear velocity within the circumference and omega is equal to the angular velocity at the center of the circle. R is always fixed. Circular motion. Are we okay? Now, let's also derive the relationship between, yes, the linear velocity changes with time. So when you start a fan, as it is, hello. Hey, um, hello. please, well, um, I didn't get the, the heading for this particular one, the relationship no, we, between. We are looking at the relationship between linear velocity and angular velocity. Thank you. Now, when you start a fan, okay, you realize that its speed, the speed of the blade continues, as well as the rotation at the center, the rod would also increase. So an increase in linear velocity, whenever there is an increase in linear velocity with respect to time, there will be a corresponding increase in angular velocity at the center with respect to time. And this gives us what we call the angular acceleration. So we have, as a result of changing speed, okay, along the, along the circumference of the circle, there will also be a changing angular speed at the, at the center of the circle, okay? So if you have, we have V is equal to R omega as the relationship between linear velocity and angular velocity. When these quantities are changing with respect to time, divided by T and this side divided by T, it gives us the relationship between um, linear velocity, linear acceleration, and then angular acceleration. So this is V on T is A, linear acceleration within the, circum um, the circumference of the circle. And because this is equal to R times omega T, this part is equal to the angular acceleration alpha. Giving us the relationship, please, if if you can see as a result of the re reflection of light, this is it. A is equal to R times alpha, where A is equal to linear acceleration within the circumference, and alpha is equal to angular acceleration at the center of the circle. Are we okay? Hilda, what is that? What do you think will be the SI units of angular acceleration? Hilda. Mr. Dia. What is the SI unit of angular acceleration? Mm. Mr. Dia, um, it's, I think it's I, I, radian I, I per second square. But <laughs> all right. Uh -huh. Yes. Mr. D, I think it's radian per second squared. 
Yes, because um, this is a angular acceleration is the rate of change of angular velocity with respect to time. And you know, angular velocity has the SI unit, okay, of radian per second. So radian per second over second again. So this is equal to radian per second squared. Are we okay? Class, are you okay? Yes, please. Other units, other units can be rev per second squared or or rev per minute squared. Okay, radian per hour and so on and so forth. So take note, you can be given a question in that form and then be asked to convert into SI units. All right, are we okay? Now, another similarity linear motion has with, um, okay, before we go to the equation, let me also draw your attention to the um the period, the frequency of oscillation. When we talk about one complete cycle, okay, we are talking about one complete revolution. A complete cycle in this case is starting from maybe a point A and then coming back to where it ends. This is a complete cycle. Okay. That's a complete cycle. Now, if you are looking for the time taking, let's assume that you are an athlete. You were able to go round this um, maybe five times. Number of revolution. Number of revolutions or cycles. You were able to go round it five, five times using a time of, you took a total time of um, maybe 30 minutes. 30 minutes. Okay. To go round this this number of times. If I want the time taken to go around this once, you're able to go around this five times using 30 minutes. If, I'm, if I ask you to calculate time taking for one complete revolution, how would you calculate it for me? For a complete revolution. How would you calculate that for me? You use a time of 30 minutes. Okay. To make five complete revolution. If I want you to calculate the time taking for just a complete revolution out of the five revolutions. How, how would you do that calculation for me? Eliana, how would you do that? Please, the question again. Eliana, you were able to use 30 minutes to go, okay, to make five complete revolutions for me. If I want you to help me calculate the time you took, for one complete revolution out of the five, how would you do that calculation for me? I want the time okay. taken to make one. Proportion. Hey. Proportion. Drama. 
Okay, Deborah. Miss Sabia. Uh -huh. Please me, I'm trying. So I think um it should be one over five times, thirty minutes. One over five times. Thirty minutes. The total time, okay. I think it's it's clear. The total time taken to make five revolution is thirty minutes. Okay. I'm interested in the time you took to make just one. Brittany. Um, Sadia, please. Um, so to find it, it will be one on the um, time taken. Um, uh, but sorry. Apl apply it to the period the will be. I've given you. Okay. So, um, I know um, frequency is one on the period. That's the total time taken. So the, um, wait. You are on point. Go, go ahead. The period, the time taken to make the number. Mr. Jia, please can you hear me? Yes. Please, what, what I think. I'm... The, what I'm saying is that use the scenario I've created. Okay. Uh, um, the scenario is that Brittany, I you I ask you to okay, move round um a school over, maybe run about, and I gave you 30 minutes. Uh, out of the 30 minutes, you were okay. able to make five. Now, I'm interested in the time you took to make one complete. What time did you use to make one complete revolution? That's what I'm driving at. The line, hello. Okay, so if I if I want the time taken to make one complete revolution, look at it. You use 30 minutes. So the total minutes used for the five divided by the number of revolutions you were able to make, five, would give me the time for each. Please, is that okay? Eliana, is that okay? And uh, Brittany? Yes, please. You use a total yes, of please. 30 minutes to okay to make one uh, five complete revolution. If I need the time you took to make one, I have to divide the total time by the number of revolutions you made. And so yeah. this will give me six minutes, meaning you took six minutes to okay to go around this oval once. And this the time taken to make one complete revolution is what we call as the word period. Okay, so capital T. Okay. Miss Adria. Hello. Miss Adria. Please, yes, does this only apply when the, when the speed is constant? Like if you are moving at a constant speed, is that the only like condition for this? Y yes, yes. To... Yes. Okay. Yeah. We have to consider a uniform um circular motion. Else you can't have that. Uh -huh. It will be distorted. So the time, the time taken to make a complete, a complete revolution. Revolution is what we call as as the period represented by capital T. Okay. Now, in in relation Y, the period capital T is equal to how did we calculate it? The total time T small letter T divided by number of 
complete oscillation. So period is equal to T over N, where small t is the total time N is the number of complete revolution. So you have to define your letters. Makofala, are you there? Gloria. Yes, Mr. Adia. Gloria, are you there? So where? Yes, please. Where? Capital T is equal to the period. Small t is equal to total time. And n is equal to number of number of complete revolution. Or it can be number of revolution. And so period is equal to small t over n. Okay. Now, when we talk about frequency. Frequency. Over here, with frequency, we are looking at frequency is from the word frequent. How frequent were you? Okay. In your revolution, how frequent were you? In determining frequency, we look at the number of rounds you made. How frequent? Were you in a mark and uh, uh, marking on a uh, on a journey around the the oval? We look at the number of complete revolution you made within a given time. We look at the number.